Hi, I'm Andrea, and I'm a research scientist on Google Research's Brain Team. In this episode of Research Bytes, you learn how Google Research is working together with the European Bioinformatics Institute at the European Molecular Biology Laboratory to predict the function of proteins. We've developed a model called ProteinLM, which can predict a short functional description called a protein name from the protein's amino acid sequence. Predictions from ProteinLM are now used to label millions of protein sequences, which previously had no description in the Institute's database. In this video, you'll learn more about the challenges we tackled, the approach we chose, how we built ProteinLM, what we observed, and finally, what we're looking forward to exploring next in our research. Let's get started. Proteins are one of the central building blocks of life on Earth and are present everywhere, from our own bodies, to our food, to medications, to laundry detergent. Our DNA contains the formula for our bodies to produce proteins, which then carry out necessary functions like transporting oxygen, speeding up chemical reactions, or performing cell repairs. Understanding the role of each protein in our bodies is critical to identifying proteins that are connected to diseases and that can be used as drug targets. Also, designing new proteins can enable huge advances in drug discovery. For instance, in 2019, it was announced that several new treatments proposed a cure for Ebola. Ebola is a terrible disease that scientists have been trying to eradicate for a very long time. The solution was to design and synthesize the right antibody, which is a type of protein. However, developing new proteins for drug design involves a lot of trial and error. It typically takes years of effort and hundreds of millions of dollars. To date, science has just scraped the surface of the benefits custom-designed proteins could have in our everyday lives. Unlocking their power could open endless possibilities. Each protein is made up of a string of building blocks called amino acids. The sequence of amino acids encodes what the protein can do. The problem is that we don't know how to decode it. Experimental and computational approaches can be used to determine the 3D structure of a protein, but it's still hard to determine what the protein does. A protein function can be described in various ways, similar to how the contents of an image can be expressed in various forms. One can choose among a set of predefined categorical labels that encode common types of functions, or write short textual descriptions, or extended paragraphs describing the function in detail. Describing a protein function is also similar to translating between two languages, the language of protein sequences and their natural language functional descriptions. We've seen a lot of progress in gathering protein sequences and functional annotations like this in databases like Uniprot and the Gene Ontology, which are used by millions of life science researchers worldwide. But there is still a long way to go. Right now, less than 1% of naturally occurring protein sequences have been experimentally characterized. Experimental annotation is slow and expensive. And to further complicate things, more than 30% of proteins haven't even been computationally annotated, in many cases because their sequences are too distant from proteins with known function. We saw an opportunity to leverage recent advancements in language models combined with the protein sequence data available to train models to predict natural language descriptions that outline the functional properties of amino acid sequences. In a first step towards addressing this challenge, we develop models that generate short natural language descriptions like protein names. So here's how we approach this with ProteinLM. We were inspired by the natural language processing paradigm of modeling problems as sequence-to-sequence tasks where both the input and the output are provided as text, even in cases where the outputs involve categorical or numerical data. To start, we solved a smaller problem where we took as input shorter amino acid sequences corresponding to independent subunits of proteins called domains, and we predicted their function both via categorical labels and as natural language. Once we proved our method viable on the smaller problem, we were able to expand it out to annotate full protein sequences from the Uniprot database with their protein names. These are very complex problems where the inputs can be very large. A protein sequence typically has several hundreds of amino acids and can have up to 40,000. The model takes the amino acid sequence input in the form of a sequence of characters, one per amino acid, and outputs the name or description. The output is generated one token at a time, which allows the models to use existing names when available or produce new names if not. For the protein name prediction task, the data available for training had over 150 million proteins. Some of the bigger challenges in this work came from deciding which data to use for training and evaluation tasks. We held out newly introduced proteins to evaluate the use case of annotating future proteins. We also had out sequences that were far from the training set, and all the sequences that were unnamed. 
We know that assessing whether a given prediction is correct is challenging. Natural language descriptions are notoriously hard to evaluate, and in the case of proteins, one cannot visually detect whether a prediction is correct. Curators perform manual evaluation using the existing information and bioinformatics tools, and found that a high percentage of our predictions were accurate for the protein or a related protein. In some cases, however, the existing information and bioinformatics tools cannot prove or disprove that the prediction is correct. Knowing whether a prediction is correct when no other computational method has previously been successful is challenging. Inspired by the curator's process, we automated the evaluation and found that the protein LM is accurate across a large number of protein sequences. Finally, the model can be used in two ways, to take as input a protein and generate a natural language description, or to take as input a natural language description and discover relevant proteins in a database. We asked ProteinLM to search among the uncharacterized proteins for a CRISPR small Cas9 homolog and found that in many cases, the retrieved proteins are indeed likely similar to Cas9. There's still considerable work to be done towards naming proteins, and there is a long road ahead before we can describe proteins and answer questions about them as we do for images. However, we're excited about the progress made in annotating proteins using machine learning and the impact this can have on scientific discoveries that rely on protein function understanding, like drug discovery. We released annotations for millions of full-length protein sequences, which are previously unnamed, and we released collab notebooks to enable users to try out our models and curation pipeline. Because of the collaboration with the European Bioinformatics Institute, we have an opportunity to improve the models with each Uniprot release. We're looking to incorporate the feedback from manual and automatic curation and the feedback from users back into the training process, as well as to add new sources of information as input when available. In fact, our newest predictions already use an ensemble of models with different inputs. As we explore future directions for this work, we look forward to tackling new tasks like predicting longer functional descriptions or the inverse problem of starting with a protein description as input and generating a new sequence from scratch with a predicted function that matches the user-defined description. Science can benefit from advances in AI, here natural language processing, and reciprocally provides exciting data and complex problems to challenge us to further push AI forward. To learn more about this work, please check out the links below in the description. If you found this video interesting, please share it, and don't forget to subscribe to the Google Research YouTube channel.